Welcome to Evolution of Self with me, Britannia. I'm going to speak about authentic power today because this is something that has been so important to me in, in my journey um, in sort of consciousness and becoming more conscious. Because when I first started, when I trained as a coach um, a decade ago, um, I was inspired and so moved about creating change through, through empowering people, but that doesn't really all encompass it. And one of the people that really, really inspired me was Nelson Mandela. And he inspired me because of who he was being. When he came out of prison and when he um, left all of that behind, he spoke about forgiveness. But he didn't just play lip service to it. You could see in the way he was and, and when he showed up and what he spoke about and who he was being that forgiveness had happened on an incredibly deep level. But it wasn't just forgiveness. It was his authenticity. Um, and he had a power. Um, this huge power to change a nation that hated each other, that, you know, people that had done atrocious things to each other. He managed to unite those people um, so that they were under the same vision of a united country, a rainbow country. And to me, that didn't happen through force. That happened through another way of being. And um, I spoke about it when I was sort of, you know, a number of years ago, but I couldn't find a word for it. And the closest I could get was like power. It was a personal power. But I've now realised that the true word is authentic power. Um, and it's about connecting. It's about so many of the things that I speak about. It's about having authenticity. Um, it's about being present, so completely present. It's about allowing inspiration. It's about truly being. Um, and I think there's only a few people in this world that have managed that, but I don't think that that means that it's out of the reach of the rest of us, or that we can't strive for it or attain it in different parts of our lives. Um, and that's what authentic power is to me. It's about creating space for your being. So your authentic power, or if you were able to step into your authentic power, would be very different from Nelson Mandela because you wouldn't be motivated by the same things that he's, or inspired, sorry, rather than motivated by the same things that he was inspired by. But developing that authentic power is developing all areas. It's about um, allowing connection to source. It's about um, deepening your state of being in this world because it's about being present, um, it's about being grateful and in wonderment of the life that we live. And a lot of these things I have spoken about, and I'll put links to them in the notes so that you can access different um, talks that I've done on them. But when I talk about authentic power, it's coming back to that definition of creating space for your being. And I think that inside all of us, we have a spark, and I call it our truth. Um, I call it different things at different times when I'm inspired to, but it's our truth, it's our essence, it's our soul. And to me, this, this spark inside of us, it's a spark of all that is. It's a spark of source. And I believe that our journey here on Earth is to reconnect with that, to reconnect with the truth of who we are to reconnect with the truth of um, the universe, of the collective um, consciousness all around us. And to live from that space, to live from inspiration, to live with um, alignment, to live with gratitude, um, and to live our lives with purpose and curiosity and fulfilment. But for us to do that, we need to create a connect back to this space of allowing. Um, allowing our being to be. And for that, we need to shift from the subconscious, egotistical, automated way of being um, into a more conscious, inspired way of being that's in alignment. Because everything that we're looking for, for bliss, for fulfillment, for purpose, for value in ourselves, it's all on the other side. But most of us are trying to use what we have known in the subconscious automated state. We're stuck in our old patterns and our old beliefs. 
and there are ways to make the gap, to make that change. Um, and I hope that I can share some of those ways in these videos and blogs and podcasts with you because um, I don't always manage to walk the path. <laughs> I am by no means a Nelson Mandela or a Gandhi or anyone like that, um, but I, I try. And as I go along and I look back over my life, I can see year on year that although I might stumble and I might have a wobble, and sometimes those wobbles are quite major, that it's still going in the right direction. Um, and that's why I know that these things work, because these tools that I share, these ideas, these inspirations, they're things that my clients um, use, and I see the most amazing transformations in their lives. And the things that I use, that I practice, that I play with, that I know work in my life as well. So this authentic power, this creating space for your being, how do you do it? Well, first of all, you need to be able to connect to your being. You need to be able to know the truth of you. And um, I've done a meditation that I've created and it's on my website and I'll put it in the notes below so you can access it should you want to. Um, that helps you to connect back to that aspect of yourself. It's about seeing the beauty in yourself. It's about being true to yourself and not wavering when other people um, come into your life. Um, it's not about, it's about buying, not buying into other people's reality and it's about trusting in your own and in yourself. And the more fully that you can step into that, the more fully you can stand in that, the more powerful you are. And the beauty about this power is it cannot be misused because when you're standing in the space of love and the space of truth and the space of connection, only truth and love and connection can come through and, and into the world that you, you are in. I love, um, there's a story about an orange and if you squeeze an orange, orange juice comes out and if you squeeze a lemon, lemon juice comes out. And it's the same with us. It's what we are inside. So if we're still stuck in this subconscious, egotistical, automated way of being where our programs and our beliefs, we think they're real and we buy into them. When things get rattled in our life and we get squeezed, then, then that is what comes out of us. It's the, the pain, the hurts, the things that we're attached to, the things that we're still um, playing with in our lives. But the more we shift into this conscious way of being, this conscious way of living, this um, authentic power that we all have inside of us. When we get squeezed, what's inside of us is love. Um, it's passion, beautiful passion. It's joy, it's bliss. And, and, and that is what comes out and we share with the world. And I kind of see that with people like Gandhi and Nelson Mandela, is they get to a space in their life that when things jiggle them and they get bumped, the thing that comes out of them is love, it's compassion, and it's the ability to see the beauty in someone else, to see the spark that you know is inside of you. When you can see it in you, then you can see it in somebody else. Um, and then everybody in the world that you come into is a joyous connection. I hope you've enjoyed this rather wandering little offering that I've, I've given today. Um, if, you, if you've enjoyed it as much as I've enjoyed sharing it with you, please like, subscribe, comment and share. Um, I have loads of resources, some of which I've spoken about and I'll put in the comments below. Um, others which um, are on my website, which you're welcome to go and visit. So much love from me to you and I'll see you next week. Bye bye.